started, I would like to introduce Kaizen's own Barry Thomas. Well, good morning, Sherry, and thank you for allowing me this wonderful opportunity to present today at Kaizen's Tech to Tech. My topic will be on stencil cleaning process, but more specifically, what's the best way to clean my stencil offline? What I hope to accomplish today in this Tech to Tech session for our audience will be a few things. Why do I need to clean my stencils? Why IPA is not my go-to solvent? What is the best method for cleaning stencils? And how do I know I'm using the proper chemistry? Long gone are the days, um, ladies and gentlemen, where we can simply pawn off the uh, stencil cleaning to the third shift maintenance department. With miniaturization rapidly increasing, uh, along with tighter tolerances on our stencils, uh, coupled with solder paste manufacturers um, changing their product formulation, what seems to be daily, stencil cleaning is more precision in nature and as such needs to be viewed with much greater consideration. You know, here it is today, April 15th, uh, 2021, and even to this day, when I go into a facility, too often I see companies and individuals using IPA as their go-to solvent in many cleaning operations. I um, understand why this is the case. It's a readily available solvent within your facility, and quite frankly, it's inexpensive. But IPA is not a universal solvent for all solder paste and flux systems. Stencil cleaning, like I said, is more comprehensive. It's a, it requires a deep, thorough understanding of the type of flux residues that you'll be cleaning, whether it's a RMA paste, whether it's a no clean paste, or even a lead free paste. Uh, we, we really know, need to understand what are those residues. Uh, with the cleaning agent, we need to know whether we're using a biphase or a homogenous uh, type of a solution. Uh, more on this uh, topic a little bit later in this presentation. And as far as the mechanical energy, we need to understand whether we're using uh, an ultrasonic machine or spraying air. What are some of the temperature restrictions? When we understand all of this information and we bring it together, we like to we call this our cleaning agent best fit fit zone. A properly engineered solvent for your paste starts with good solubility. We've taken equal parts of solder paste from several high profile solder paste manufacturing companies, placed them in each one of these vials. And as you can see, we got total dissolution. It was able to break up the solder paste beautifully. We did the same experiment with IPA. Of the six vials, two of them performed reasonably well. The other four failed miserably. On the right hand part of this slide, let's keep in mind, um, IPA is quite flammable. Anytime I can get a flammable material out of a manufacturing plant, I'm all for it. You know, a lot of companies will go ahead and choose IPA, uh, again, simply because it's inexpensive. But keep in mind, IPA um, dries quickly um, and it, it evaporates quickly and your total consumption is going to be a lot higher than what you would originally thought. So if you were to choose a, a, an engineered solvent, the price delta between the two is actually closer than what might, some people might realize. Not only are we um, required to clean the solder paste, but we're being uh, tasked with being able to uh, clean the chip under epoxies and silver conductive epoxies as well as they're becoming more prevalent in the manufacturing environment. We have equipment choices. We have on the left-hand side of an ultrasonic cleaning piece of equipment. In the middle is spray and air. Then we have the good old fashioned elbow grease manual wiping. Uh, if you're choosing ultrasonic or spray and air, um, both of these systems can be uh, rinsed with either DI water or, or, a, or, um, or a solvent. I'm often asked what choice is best. I usually default by saying ultrasonics or spray and air. I'm not a real big fan of uh, manual hand wiping. And the reason I prefer ultrasonics and spray and air is you, you simply get a better flushing action and it's more comprehensive. You will have greater peace of mind knowing that the whole surface is being cleaned more uniformly than if somebody's doing it simply with hand wipes. Let's face it, manual hand wiping um, is subjective to the operator or operator on any given day. 
It lends itself to missing a spot or several spots. And uh, quite frankly, you have a tendency to push and move the paste around the stencil and not actually clean it. We have choices with our cleaning agents as well. On the left-hand side of the screen is what we call a biphase or better known as a splitting chemistry. And the right-hand side is a homogeneous solution, which is totally uniform. Doesn't matter whether you're using spray and air or ultrasonic equipment, a biphase or splitting chemistry or homogeneous. What is important, ladies and gentlemen, is that you make sure that you match up the chemistry with the equipment. Using a splitting chemistry needs to be mixed very well for one thing, but also may not uh, clean or rinse as well in the ultrasonic system. Conversely, a homogeneous type of solution uh, may not have a defoamer, so you may not be able to use this effectively in spray and air equipment. And another uh, slight drawback is that uh, it tends to be slightly higher in alkalinity. Higher alkalinity can cause some issues um, with your nano coatings. Um, and usually a higher alkalinity is going to get the attention of your EHS department. So again, it's important to match the chemistry with the equipment. Some additional process tips. Boy, here's a good one. Always, always remove excess solder paste from your stencil. Not doing so is going to shorten your bath life. Wash your stencil immediately after removal from the printer. If you leave it behind for 30 minutes, an hour, two hours, you will have more of a challenge getting that stencil clean. I always tell my children at home that, hey, uh, once you start cooking, uh, clean right away. If you're going to wait, it's going to be more challenging for you. Same principle applies for the stencils. Clean it immediately. Uh, temperature. We should not exceed 120 degree F or 49 degree C. If we do, you have a tendency or a propensity to cure the adhesive or the epoxies. Some additional uh, reminders. The wash concentration. You can use it either uh, diluted or it can be ready to use. Wash temperature. Doesn't hurt saying it again. Don't exceed 120 degree F. Your spray impingement on the equipment, whether it's uh, ultrasonics or spray and air, you know, make sure we have these settings dialed in correctly. This will help shorten the process times. Um, and speaking of process times, wash times typically on a stencil. I've seen customers that are cleaning their stencils every day in two, three minutes. Um, some obviously five and depends on the type of soil that you're removing. If it's a no clean or lead free, uh, more challenging soil, you may need up to 10 minutes. Um, rinsing, you know, common practice is uh, rinse with DI water followed by drying, but again, this can be optional. But more than anything else, always inspect the stencil when you put it back on the machine to use again. Too often, there's many steps once the stencil comes off the printer, goes to the cleaning operation, comes back, that stencil could be damaged. If it is without inspection, you, this will cause grief on the, uh, on the assembly line. Speaking of inspection, on the left-hand side, we have a stencil before cleaning and on the right-hand side after cleaning. I'm not sure it's you know, quite visible to the audience, but the before cleaning, there's certainly a fair amount of solder paste that's on the stencil itself, as well as some solder spheres or solder balls inside the apertures. The right-hand side, this is a very clean, pristine stencil, no solder paste remaining, nothing in the apertures. This is the type of stencil that you want to return back to the printer. Here's an example of a before and after stencil from silver epoxy. <laughs> Some additional considerations. Not all cleaning agents can remove adhesives. Some cleaning agents, especially high alkalinity, will remove the nano coatings. This is actually an important topic, the nano coating, so much so that we're going to dedicate, Kaizen's going to dedicate a tech to tech session specifically on nano coatings. And this will take place, um, I, I believe, May 6, 20, 2021, so less than a month away. Um, if you're interested in this topic, uh, please reach out to me or go to Kaizen's uh, webpage. Uh, concentration has a major impact on bath life. Um, sometimes I know companies will try to you know, get a little stingy and go with a 10 or 15 percent solution in their um, um, concentration. And this won't, this, it, it would be better. You're going to have your shortened bath life if you go with that percentage. The sweet spot really is in the 20 to 25 percent range. 
Uh, and not all stencil cleaners will clean at the same parameters for every solder paste. Case studies. I'm running a little bit uh, long um, for today's presentation, but uh, I do have a couple case studies that I would really love to share with the audience. If you're interested, please reach out to me afterwards. Um, there, there are two case studies. Uh, the first one I have is um, it, it's a, contra a global contract manufacturer who made the switch from IPA to an engineered solution um, in, an, in an ultrasonic machine. And then the second case study I have that I'd love to share with you is a, is a tier one global supplier to the automotive uh, sector. Uh, and they made the change from IPA to uh, a sprayer um, application. Uh, but please reach out to me. I'd be happy to go over these case studies with you afterwards. In conclusion, you know, same principles apply to all type of stencil cleaning, whether it's you know, the paste or the epoxy or adhesive. It's important to pay attention, you know, with your physical or mechanical energy, uh, use the proper chemistry. Uh, temperature plays a pivotal role. Um, you know, ladies and gentlemen, you know, at the end of the day, uh, if we take the proper time and pay close attention to all of these details, we will undoubtedly have a clean stencil and more importantly, an optimized process. That concludes my presentation. I appreciate your time. I will now turn it over to Sherry. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Barry. If you would like to discuss this topic further, please contact your local Kaizen representative or send an email to tech, the number two, tech at kaizen.com and we will have one of our cleaning experts schedule a follow-up with you as soon as possible also if you would like to contact us about those two case studies that barry mentioned you can contact us in the same way again we thank you all for joining us today and we hope to see you again soon stay safe stay healthy and have a great day